Bumps. Foul will be on Goodson. And Dimitri Goodson is the point guard of the future for Gonzaga. And he really puts, he's got quick on quick, puts really good pressure on the ball, just got that elbow. Oh, almost in the backcourt, but threw it away anyway. And those are the kind of turnovers that really kill you as a coach. It's just a simple inbounds play, and you turn it over. Let's see if Gonzaga can get some offense going. They had the lead 6 0 early. If they set ball screens, two or three of them, they're going to get some openings because Tennessee did not handle ball screens very well when they played Kansas. Fargo tried to just power through two defenders when he lost the ball. Right bet will clear the glass. Seven minutes in, Tennessee up by seven. Nice lead underneath, but a block shot by Chisholm. Chisholm knocked it away from Tab trying to get down the floor. That jump stop is going to be a foul. Well, what a bad break for Tennessee. Wayne Chisholm with the block and just trying to run the floor. He can't fault the effort, but he was the one that knocked that ball away from Josh Tab and Dimitri Goodson just took it to the rack and Tab. That was not a very good foul because he you know, did it in a kind of wimpy fashion. I mean, go after the ball. If you're going to get that foul, make sure that Goodson can't complete the play, and he just about was able to put that in. Goodson, 61% from the free throw line so far this year. Freshman out of Spring, Texas. And Brad, those are the kind of mistakes that really add up over the course of the game. You know, throwing away the inbounds pass when you've got some momentum, right? You block a shot when, really, Gonzaga had a layup, and you knock it away, and all of a sudden they get two free throws out of it. That, that, that can really hurt you during the course of the ball game. Goodson got them both. And Bruce Pearl doing some serious coaching over there to his backcourt. On the bench. Still, they maintain a five-point lead with just under 13 minutes to play in the first half. So Gonzaga going with a little 2-3 zone here. The place to get it is in the middle. They can get into the middle of that zone and make a play from the middle. They can find some open shots. Taking it in is Hobson, who we didn't know if we'd even see. As the flu, didn't look like he had the flu on that one. He flew right over his defender for his first basket. You know what's funny, Brad? Sometimes players can play better when they're not feeling well. Concentrate more. Well, they're concentrating on the things you can do instead of flying all over the place. And Scotty Hobson, who's been pulling the trigger, frankly, on some shots maybe he shouldn't be taking throughout the season. A little shot fake, and he drove it. Gray misses a three, and Hobson's got the rebound. Hobson's come in, done two very good things in two trips. Williams, quick hook. Ball still loose, and Gonzaga can't find a handle. Nobody could. Timeout. 11.57 remaining in the first half. Tennessee's matched its biggest advantage of the ball game, up seven with 11.57 to go in the half. That's where he was selected. He's had a great NBA career. It was great to see him win a championship last year. Absolutely. Here's Hobson outside, and he hits a three. So Hobson with the flu, Tatum who's healthy, those two have all of Tennessee's points. And what a terrific play by Tennessee, getting the ball into the middle, into the hands of Tyler Smith, the playmaker, who was able to get it to Scotty Hobson, who could step into that shot. And you know, Hobson, I, he's such a great athlete. When he can drive the ball, he's that much more effective. But See the ball, he gets the ball into the middle of the floor, draws the defense, everybody inside the lane, and Hobson able to step into that shot for three. Goodson with Mays on him. Lead is double digits. And now that'll send David the free throw line. The ball screens are really difficult right now for Tennessee to guard. Every time there's been a roll off a ball screen, whether it's been Josh Heitfeld or whether it's been Austin Day, they've been wide open. Here's the ball screen, the hedge. Nobody comes over. That is just way too easy. I mean, if you're going to hedge like that, you've got to be able to hedge and recover. And you've also got to have somebody from the weak side that is seeing the ball and watching that that is in the middle of the floor that can come over and rotate. And as good as we've seen Wayne Chisholm at times play, he's been the guy caught with his shorts around his ankles on a couple of those. No question. 
They got one of two. One thing you don't want to do, Brad, is, as we talked about before, is letting a, a really good scorer see the ball go through the net. And when you foul a guy like Austin Day, it gives him the confidence of watching that ball go through a couple times. Hobson, just a power feed to Chisholm. How did that ball get through there? He had some Zuzu on that baby or it never would have got there because somebody had a hand on it. Well, it's, it depends on which coach is watching on film because Bruce Pearl's going to say, hey, great pass. And Mark <laughs> Few's going to say, how could you let that get through there? Well, there's a nice cut to the basket by Bolden again. And that's what's gotten Gonzaga most of its points. 2-3 zone again. Again, the middle is open. Tyler Smith's the guy that got uh, has to get to the middle. Move the ball from side to side and then attack with a flash. They get it to him on the wing, and he'll try to back in. And feeds Chisholm again. Left hand this time for the big guy. And Chisholm kind of hit behind the back of that zone. He just flashed in there and give a lot of credit to Tyler Smith for seeing him. Down short on a three. Rebound off to Prince. Back comes Tennessee with an 11-point cushion. Prince going to try a triple of his own. Did he get off the floor? Uh, it didn't look like it. He's had a bad so. ankle. He missed three games with a bad ankle. And that looked like it. That looked like me taking a shot out there. Bolden on the drive. Well, if Tennessee is building a wall defensively, that wall has got an awful lot of holes in it because Matt <laughs> Bolden just went 85 feet and nobody got in his way. He went all the way to the rim. But Chisholm foul is going to be on day before Wayne could go up. And Wayne Chisholm has proven to be a very good player. You can see right here, there's that pass that gets through. That's just bad defense by Austin Day. Not playing up the line. He needed to be up the line to get that pass. And very nice flash getting by Day again. Been burned twice. Just a nice little flash in the middle of that zone. When you stay behind it, you make the defense turn its head. That three-pointer won't go, but Tyler Smith's in the right place to keep it alive. And he'll go back up with it. And he's fouled. Every shot that goes up for Tennessee, Brad, they send four guys to the offensive glass. And Gonzaga cannot jump with the Volunteers. They have got to hit them and turn and go. Whether it's a box out or whether you just hit and go, you have got to lay body on a Tennessee volunteer or they're going to cut you up on a glass. Here's Mr. Versatility at the free throw line. Tyler Smith who has his first point. He's eighth in the conference in scoring, 18th in rebounding, ninth in assists, 12th in field goal percentage, and 15th in free throw percentage. He's that kind of guy. He doesn't have a great shot. He just works hard all the time. All SEC a year ago. And there's his first two points of the ballgame. You know, with all those accolades, I don't think he's played his best yet. No, I, don't I think he's got a lot better in him, and as his teammates get better, he's going to be able to do more with them. Well, Notre Dame's got that long winning streak of 44 games and a year old buddy. And now Bruce Pearl, 37 straight here, goes back to Kentucky over two years ago. A backdoor cut the bounce pass intercepted by Prince ahead and one. I'll tell you what, Brad, Emmanuel Negadu did a great job on defense on the last possession and then just raced out the other end. Terrific pass ahead by J.P. Prince, but Negadu really fought on the other end to keep Josh Heitfeld from rolling after that high ball screen. Might have fouled him, but at least he fought him. And that's the kind of effort that Bruce Pearl needs defensively and the kind of energy that Emmanuel Negadu can bring into this game. Negadu, 82% free throw shooter, shows why. Three point play, and the lead swells to 28 14 as the Volunteers have got the Bulldogs doubled. Look how much more active Negadu is, getting out there, hedging, and recovering. And he has done a much better job on ball screens just in two possessions. Hold a nice fadeaway jumper, showing his outside shooting prowess. He's got seven, he's trying to hold things together here. Another thing Bolden can do is post up, and Gonzaga will run some sets to get him posting up against a guard. Cameron Tatum down on the low block. Let's see if they try to run him free. He was so hot early. Looking with this 2-3 zone. Tennessee needs a little bit more movement against it. They're a little stagnant right now. Six on the shot clock. Long ball by Tatum. Got it!
He took that one from Hill Street. Margo, that's his first basket. What a strong move. Bobby Mays played pretty darn good defense to force a very difficult shot. And Pargo, you can see the power that he has and the explosiveness. And he was a two guard West Coast Conference player of the year last year. And this year, more of a, what I would say, trying to be a pure point guard. He's really done a good job of it. Now, Cameron Tatum. He has been all over the place for the Volunteers tonight. He's a point shy of his career high, and we still have 7.41 to go in the first half. It's enough to make you smile in Knoxville. Number one team. I think it's pretty simple. and people. Yeah, it